I'm Tiffany Hayes, and welcome to the ongoing history of beer. So I'm from The Traveling Pint, and we're back with another episode. And today I have a very special guest that has joined us, Shannon from Concession Road out in Jarvis. Yeah. Jarvis, Ontario. Yeah. Does everyone say, where's Jarvis? Should we start with where Jarvis is? We should probably start with where Jarvis is. <laughs> so, so welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today, bringing some lovely beers and uh, kind of just talking all things beer. Ah, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. So where is Jarvis? Let's start there. So <laughs> we're part of Haldeman County. We're Haldeman County's first craft brewery. Excellent. And Jarvis is the intersection of Highway 3 and Highway 6. So on your way to Port Dover, it's, uh, it's a very small little town, just the four corners and... Yeah. And there's a barn gone now. They used to have a barn with like the big corn painted on the side. I don't know if you remember yeah, that. Yeah, that's gone. We used to drive out to see my parents. So <laughs> We used to be home of Corn, uh, corn Fest. Yeah, and that's right. Yeah, that's uh, no longer. so Too funny. Yeah. And now, now it's beer. It's beer. Yeah. So it's beautiful. I love that. Obviously, cities nowadays are being come uh, over, not overpopulated, but there's a huge population of breweries. So it's nice to see these little hamlets kind of creating them a little bit out of town. And like you say, you're Haldeman's yes. only brewery. Only one. At this point. But there still are some in the area, so still being able to make kind of a day trip. Exactly, yeah. We're good. really close to Norfolk County. So you've right. got New Limburg yes. Brewery, Charlottesville, uh, Blue Elephant, Ramblin' Road, uh, Hometown Brewery, all oh, within yeah. the area. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I forgot those guys are up and running now, too. Yeah. Cool. So how long have you been brewing beer? So we've been brewing beer about three years now. Okay. And coming up on our two-year anniversary no. of being open. So, yeah. That's why I asked. I was thinking it's just over a year, and I'm like, no, it's been longer. Yeah. But time flies when you're drinking a right. lot of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. That's it's, awesome. It's going really well for us so far. So, yeah. Cool. Cool. And it's you and your husband? It is. Okay. So Jeff and Jeff's working today. He is actually at block three drinking Oh, today. yeah. Yes. Work, <laughs> re product uh, research or product <laughs> development, perhaps? Exactly. Oh, yep. That's good. That's good. They're yeah. good guys up there. Too. They're awesome guys. Yeah. He was in the neighborhood and he thought, they went to Short Finger first. So I'm not oh. sure how he wound up at, from Short Finger <laughs> to block three, but yeah. I yeah, guess. those are that, well, <laughs> no. same direction. Yep. That's funny. Yeah, so he's out visiting James and uh, checking out their beers. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, that's good. Well, I do also love, I'll touch on the whole women in beer too. So it is nice to see more breweries kind of popping up um, as a husband and wife team. So I can imagine that's a lot of work. Number one, working with your husband mm -hmm. all the time. <laughs> Maybe the beer helps. Right. But two, kind of creating that. And um, it's definitely a passion project, but... Yeah, how has it been working with Jeff? Because you guys weren't working together before, right? Was this kind of your first sort of entrepreneurial? Absolutely. Yeah, um, so it's, it's good. Uh, we both take on very separate roles at the brewery. Okay. Um, I do kind of report to him. So this is his baby. <laughs> and I was going to keep my full-time career and just kind of help out here and there. But I've taken on a much bigger role than I thought. So I do a lot awesome. of the marketing, branding, event coordination, uh, merchandising, all of that kind of stuff. Well, he handles most of the beer. Yeah. I do get to brew from time to time. If Yay. I have a day open in my schedule, I'll hop in and cool. brew some beers and come up with some recipes for him. So, yeah. 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 So, you guys have still a little bit of a smaller batch brewery, if you will, right? Yes. Do you know the numbers on that? I'm so bad with, <laughs> with saying with that. Like, I can never. <laughs> um, so, our system, I believe, is considered a seven barrel system okay yeah. yeah 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 i think that's right so w for every batch we brew we double the batch to fill our fermenters excellent yes, yes. i feel like someone could tell me the same number every day and i <laughs> always forget what it is so it's, it's be tough to be quizzed on that so you still have the capacity to kind of do i guess one-offs as well and then absolutely a little bit of what you have in store so we did bring some beers today yes we did. um but yeah do you guys have like a certain style or what kind of inspires you towards beer? What can you usually find when we go into your tap room? So I feel like we make beers that we like to drink um, and we do listen to our community and and what they're asking for. Yeah. We started off thinking that we were going to have to go with a lot more traditional styles. So we had the Blondale and IPA 
the brown ale and a saison were the mm -hmm. four beers that we had opened with. Now we have six taps and they rotate constantly. Okay. So you could come in one week and get an ESB and then come in the next week and a red ale would be on. Neither of those are on tap right now. We have the brown. The stout will be coming out shortly. Yay. Um, we have a wet hopped IPA currently. Ah. Uh, we had an oat pale ale, which is no longer on tap. So it's changing from week to week. and. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, because you did sort of have those. Well, I guess you have to start somewhere too, right? So yes. when you're starting up, you uh, and with smaller capacity, there's not always the the option with scheduling to to make a ton of stuff. But I think uh, you guys have done a good job. Even from the start, your beers were solid. So I know sometimes it takes a little while to to break in a brewery, so to speak, and to kind of find your uh, your groove a little bit in what it is that you like to make. And and again, in the town, like we wondered how you'd have to be stuck a little bit to. I don't want to say simpler beers because they're equally uh, hard to make because there's nothing to hide them yes. in um, and they are delicious and can be complex but sometimes with that crowd kind of um, like you say the the community you want to make sure everyone's enjoying what they're coming in for and you're not exactly uh, giving them things that are too too out there to start off perhaps right yeah. but you still had a sour yeah a so believe it or not too. the sour is one of our best sellers so it's something that we thought would be a one-off and everyone kept asking for more. So what we've done so that mm. we're not making the same sour over and over is we switch back and forth between a fruited sour to a dry hop sour. Uh. Um, we try to use local ingredients, so we're varying the ingredients. We just had a farmer give us almost 500 pounds of nectarines and peaches from the Niagara region. Nice. So we've been using those in our tropical pale ale as well as in the sours. So yeah. So let's uh, open up one of these beers. And I have my eyes on the Lumberjack Brown Ale. So I think this is the one that we're going to do. And we'll pour it. We'll head to break. Good choice. And when we come back, we'll tell everybody how delicious it is. <laughs> Welcome back, I'm Tiffany from The Traveling Pint, and this is another segment of Ongoing History of Beer. And today, Shannon's still here, she hasn't left us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're welcoming <laughs> Shannon from Concession Row Brewing. Thanks again for being here. And we've gone and gotten into your inventory a little bit here. Yeah, so we have. the brown ale, you did this last year as well. Like we I've did. had the brown ale. This is okay. one of our core beers. So we started with this in the first week we had open. Okay. Yeah. It's one of my favorites that you do. I know I'm overdue to visit out there and try other things as well, but I think this is a beautiful, beautiful beer. So why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. Um, what we're tasting in our glass today, if there's anything special that you've put in into the mix in here. Yeah, so it's got nice notes of chocolate, of roasted coffee, and I pick up a little bit of caramel in there as well. Mm. Yeah. It does have that little tad of sweetness. Yes. It is a beautiful beer. It's definitely a bestseller. So mm -hmm. when it's not on tap, we have people coming in asking when it's coming back. And and I find there's the notes of coffee you say in there. They're they're light and roasty, but it's not. They're not overly bitter. No, I love bitter as well, but I really really like the way this sits nice and sweet um, on the finish and then in dry. But it's not that bitterness that you can get sometimes from a coffee roast. Right. It's a lot. A lot sweeter so it is darker than most brown ales we kind of went to the high end of the color range for this okay. one. okay um, but the coffee I find we we saved that for a coffee milk stout so if you have that mm. one that's kind of in your face it's sweet as well though and that's what's coming out soon yes the milk stout yeah cool and then this one's called lumber jacket Tell me about your names and what's inspired them, because this is Firehouse, Firehouse which... Firehouse Blonde is named after the brewery, so when we first started the brewery, we didn't know where the location was going to be. <laughs> so we, we came up with a name, we found a building which was in an old fire hall, so we knew the Blondale would be a core beer, so mm -hmm. we wanted to kind of pay homage to the building, which is why we named it the Firehouse Blonde. Yeah. We've got uh, an IPA we call Air Raid IPA because in town there's a gentleman who sounds an air raid siren on a Saturday. So we would hear that. And everyone we runs to the brewery. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? It's funny, we haven't really heard it in a long time. He oh. used to, When we were building the brewery, we would hear it. And yeah. now we, we never hear it anymore. So there's also a lot of history with the, the war. Yep. in the area so we had an air gunnery school where there was pilots who trained from all over the world just outside of Jarvis. Oh really? Yeah. Jeez I had no idea. 
Yeah. yeah, it's it's amazing what some of the locals have told us. So there's a lot of family lineage in Jarvis okay. and in the Haldeman area, and everyone comes in and tells us about the neighborhood. And Yeah. So why did you end up picking Jarvis? Because you were living in Hamilton, so where you guys were... We were in Cayuga at the time okay. when, we, when the idea to start the brewery had kind of jumped out at us. Um, we had considered doing it on our property in Cayuga, but we were on a cistern. Mm -hmm. So water was an issue for home. Right. So we kind of looked around at the Dunville area, Cayuga, Caledonia, and we couldn't find a building that was suitable. So okay. we decided to drive out to Port Dover and just go have lunch and come up with some ideas. And to get to Dover, you drive through Jarvis and yeah. there was a building for rent, not our building. We stopped, we looked at it. Heating was a little bit of an issue. So we... Having a conversation in the car, got a call from Haldeman County, and oh. they said someone just bought the old fire hall and they want to rent it out. So it worked out perfect for us. <laughs> like all these breweries seem to find these old buildings, right, and kind right. of retrofit them to the to the new one. But I think they've got the space; they have the height usually Absolutely. to be able to put fermenters in. You've got your roll-up doors, and I think they're usually well equipped to flip over to a brewery as well. Yeah, it's been fantastic. So we've got the patio. We roll up the door, and you can sit out on the patio in the nicer weather. And good. Yeah. And I guess you would get quite a bit of traffic too in the summer heading down to Dover too, right? Absolutely. It's a good stop for Lots of to, cottage to people go. Going out to Dover, out to Long Point. Um, mm -hmm. There's a few other cottages in the area that everyone heads out to, and we're a good spot in between L London and Niagara as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, of course. Well, that's good. Um, and then I like how you, like making friends with locals too. So I think that's nice to kind of move into a smaller community, um, and you're recently moving closer now as well. Yeah, but we live in Jarvis now. Like yeah, meet those friends and just sort of give back to that community. And now that you've officially moved there, you don't have to commute as far, but you're even giving more back to the community that you guys are living in. Absolutely, kind of cool. we can walk. It's so close. Yeah. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. We'll have to come see your new place. Check out your beer stash. Awesome. <laughs> so events. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what, why other reasons people would come to your uh, brewery to visit besides, besides delicious beer. beer? Yeah. So every month, the first Friday of the month, we host a comedy show. Mm -hmm. And we have comedians coming from all over Ontario, Toronto, Hamilton, Niagara. And it's a great show. Cool. So that starts at 7 o'clock on the first Friday of the month. We also have... Sean Mulrain comes out and plays oh, yes. the third Friday of every month. Okay. And then we have... We've had Sean on the show or on the Think Millennial show several times. So oh, wonderful. He's well, fantastic. Oh, yeah. Everyone loves to come out and listen to him play. And good. he takes requests. And <laughs> yeah, he's excellent. Yeah, he's a good character. We like that guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last Friday of the month, we have an open mic night. So it's open to anyone with any musical talent um, to come out and play. We've had people from eight years old up to 65 years ah. old. And yeah. Have you been there on stage? No, <laughs> I have zero musical talent, but <laughs> Jeff will play. Oh, really? Yeah, so he gets up and plays the drums. We have a gentleman named Andy who will play in between, or he'll huh. play guitar so someone can get up and sing. And That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't know Jeff played drums. Yeah, he... <laughs> He's much better on the guitar, but yeah. uh, he'll fill in on the drums if they need him. So That's interesting. Yeah, so is it mainly uh, you and Jeff there now? Or how many employees have you taken on to... It's myself, Jeff, yeah. and Aiden. Oh, right. Yes. Right, of yeah. course. So Aiden's assistant brewer, kind of tap room okay. guy. He's, he does everything. Yeah. So yeah. A couple of our beers have been made by Aiden as well. So Excellent. Yeah, I think I initially met Aiden... Gosh, probably four or five years ago from Bell City. Yep. So that would have been our first uh, meeting and work together for a brief time there. And then I know he was sort of working around at, a, at several breweries. So you guys snagged him. Yeah, snagged him we got time. really lucky, actually. <laughs> so he, we met him through the Millennial Network. Yeah. Um, became really good friends with them. And he had mentioned to Jeff that he wanted to brew. So he'd worked in a, a lot of different breweries, but he wanted to make beer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jeff said, you know, I'll bring you on, start you as casual help, and eventually you can start making beer. So Aiden, yeah, he's brewing beer now. That's good. <laughs> it looks everyone's dream to brew beer. Right. I still like to help once in a while, but it's a lot of work. And it's very early days. <laughs> yes. Very, Aiden's the first one in. He comes in usually about 7 a.m. to prep the brew house for brewing. Uh -huh. Jeff kind of rolls out of bed and comes in <laughs> when it's time to actually make the beer. So 
That's good. Yeah. That's good. Um, and you did say you're pulling local ingredients from around, and you have a wet hop beer. Where did you guys, do you know where you got the hops for? I do. We got it from McConkie Farm. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, Wonderful. so we had went out and helped them harvest some of the hops. Yeah. And they are great people. I actually um, visited them on Howell Road, I think yep. it is, right, in St. George. So I visited them. Um, just the other week. It was fun. I got to meet them and pull lots of hops. Yeah, they're so, awesome. Yeah, so thanks again for coming on, oh, sharing thank beers. You. And we will drop below where everyone can find you at Concession Road in Jervis. Perfect. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Cheers.